Hey everyone. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Happy to have so many of you, and I think people tend to join uh, as we uh, get started. So, uh, um, my name is uh, Hugo Paquin. For those of you who don't know me, I am uh, in charge of startup and partner relations at Tech Fortier, and I'm really happy because this morning is the first edition of our icebreaker sessions. It's actually the tenth edition, so we started this uh, mid last year, uh, as you know. Okay. Per- Good morning, Sorry. everybody. Happy to have so many. Oh, I think if you're on YouTube, you got to mute it because then I, I hear myself. Okay. Um, yeah, I said we, um, as I was saying, we, we started this mid of last year because as Corona, we know, was hitting its peak, we had less opportunities to get together and, and just meet and hear from startups within the community. So then we, we had this format uh, that was originally designed for new startups in the community to introduce themselves. And um, one iteration, we got to be, uh, you know, agile and lean. So we, uh, one feedback we got is that sometimes the, the range of startup was really too broad. So for the audience, it made it a little bit less uh, tailored. And so you had B2C, B2B, you had some, uh, some different sectors like sports tech and, and then AI. And then it was just too, too random almost. So basically, we decided to go by themes. And the first thing that we have is uh, EdTech. So we have a few cool startups uh, in the the TQ community. We also have some in the region. And I think this is a great opportunity to showcase what they're working on. Uh, A little bit. So I explained the concept, basically what the goal was. But uh, the format is really five startups. They each get five minutes to pitch. I'm not going to be stopping them like super cold when they when the five minute mark is reached, but uh, uh, that's roughly the amount of time they are allowed. And then we, you know, feel free to ask them questions. If you have questions while they're talking, please log them in the chat and then we'll just pick from those and ask them once their pitch is done. Uh, The pitch order is below, so no need to go through that. Uh, basically, also, I'll be ha- sharing around a feedback form. It's not as much for feedback as much as it is to connect you with any of the startups. Uh, I do have some feedback questions, though. If you have some suggestions on how we can improve the format and make it better, please, um, you know, log them in there. As you know, when you're organizing something like this, it's always uh, uh, feedback is always gold and allows us to keep on improving for the future editions. Um, yeah, so without further ado, everybody's here for some pitches, so let's get things going. Uh, our first presenter needs uh, no introduction. You might know him as one of the Tech Fortier co-founder, Thomas Funke. Uh, Thomas is actually, he actually launched a new venture called Tomorrow's Education, so uh, a new business in the region. Uh, Thomas, I don't know if I, I did you justice with this introduction. One thing about Thomas, he also is a master marketer. He cracked the LinkedIn algorithm and he can now go viral uh, as, as he pleases. I think he got the post that got 10,000 likes last week. So uh, if you need some tips there, I think Thomas is, uh, can help you. <laughs> that was luck. That was luck. Um, okay. Uh, thank you very much for that kind introduction, Igor. Let me share my... Uh screen if you allow me to so it's, it's really great to be in this session and i'm really thankful that we've set this up uh, and to talk a bit about uh, tomorrow's education the new venture after having built tech Water and now seeing tech Water strive and i'm also really pleased to still be part of tech Water for the upcoming uh, months and weeks and years uh, to be shaping tech Water as a as an advisor more now not in an operations role but i'm, I'm, I'm really happy that uh kind of many things do come together now. And I really felt the strong need of uh, jumping to a new venture. Um, and some, some said I'm totally crazy of, of, of starting something new in the middle of uh, the Corona pandemic, but who am I talking to? <laughs> you most probably know. Um, and it, it so far turned out to be, uh, yeah, I think a, a good step. We have a, a great investors on board. We just raised a, pre, raised a pre-seed round. We have great cooperation partners. So it's going all in a nice direction. But before I um, praise the venture, which is not yet to be praised because we're really in the early stages, let me just introduce you why we actually do what we do. Um, so the end goal is really to, to create a university ready to, for tomorrow. Currently, we're developing technology. We're a technology company. 
And while we do what we do, um, I stole the picture um, and perhaps you've seen it. Why we do what we do is pretty much summarized here. Now we're in the middle of a crisis, we have the pandemic, but we tend to forget some of the other crises that we do see. Um, for example, climate change, for example, biodiversity loss. And where are all the change makers, where are all the problem solvers that we do need in order to tackle this crisis? Um, not just the COVID pandemic, which is uh, really in the heads of all of us at the moment, but all the others that are there. Um, and this has always been the case in the past, not just decades, but centuries, that humanity has faced challenges. And um, some of the challenges were made by humans, as well as some of the advances were made by humans. So in the past 200 years, especially since we have technology, technology has improved our lives tremendously. But at the same time, second level effect of technology, it has caused problems and challenges, which we again have to solve. And some of these problems are just huge. And some of these challenges are really huge. Um, and that's why we believe that we as society need as many change makers um, as possible to create a sustainable future. Um, so I'm co-founding this venture with uh, with Christian uh, Rebanik, and he's he's co-founded I don't know how many ventures he uh, established Parship, Sanox, uh, and many others, and I think he could spend his entire life creating businesses, but that won't be enough to solve these big challenges. We just need a huge community of change makers that have the capability to make change. And this is exactly what we're working on. Um, so it's not not only building the community, but educating the change makers of tomorrow today. Um, and we actually do believe that everybody has the potential. There's this nice saying um, that uh, there's high potentials and not high potentials. I don't believe in this. So every human or every baby that is born is actually a high potential. We just have to figure out what the potential is and everybody can unleash their full potential. And I believe that one of the most important things in, in uh, 2020, 21 is to make change happen and to drive change to solve problems. And for that, you need capabilities, you need the mindset, you need the character. It's not just enough to passively consume knowledge, uh, which, which sometimes is called edutainment, the Netflix of education. It's really about building skills and, and really about solving problems and the capability and the mindset to solve these problems. How do we do that? Um, we want to leverage science on the one hand and technology for effective learning. So it's really about learning science on the one hand and good and effective technology. It's not only about consuming via video, eight hour video calls, Zoom calls, where you just have the old logic of education now transferred. Alexa, louder. Alexa, louder. So somebody has to <laughs> unmute. Uh, perhaps I can also talk louder, but my name is not Alexa. Um, so leveraging technology and science is exactly what we need to do um, to actually make learning more effective for continuous growth and impact. That's what everybody of us does because we're, we're entrepreneurs, we're innovators, we're learning as much as we can. Um, and what we actually saw in the market, and I really love this quote by uh, a senior director from MIT that we've talked to, um, that he said, well, the biggest inefficiency currently is that we have so many great minds out there, so many professors and researchers that develop the best theories, that develop the best technologies. However, they're not translated and transferred to the community because literally all of these 35 million professors teach the very same thing. They teach almost the very same thing. If you just look at the topic of entrepreneurship, there's great theories emerging. If you look at the, the, the topics of technology, great theories and algorithms that are being researched. However, when it comes to an entrepreneurship class, everybody teaches the business model canvas. So there's a huge inefficiency. It's somehow weird that we have so much knowledge out there, so much like theories out there, which are just not transferred to the, to the broader public. On average, one scientific paper, and that is a crazy number, on average, one scientific paper, which takes three years to be published, is read by six people only. So three years of work by a scientist is only read by six people. And I think personally, technology can do way better to transfer all of this tremendous and great knowledge to uh, the audience. That's why we're building a student-centered global and scalable learning platform and an ecosystem and community um, that really empower all of the learners um, to have the, the skills of the 21st century. And one of the first products we launched is a master's product for FACES. Uh, it has the um, common theme of sustainability, entrepreneurship and technology. We, we're also saying ready, set, go, all right? So it's, it's you're getting started, then you're learning about sustainability, entrepreneurship technology, and then you start your venture. 
it's challenge-based learning. Um, for example, here in the later phases, you have the, um, the chance to pick your topics and build a solution within your studies, circling around your mission, and then actually create your startup instead of writing a boring uh, master thesis, you're creating your startup in a lab or working on your innovation project. So it's building up from the very start, giving you the knowledge, the skills and the competencies to actually creating a solution. And that's what the, the nice thing about this curriculum is about. We have a leading university, which is VU Vienna, the triple accredited um, that hands out the degree, which is really a master's program. Um, and there's many cool in, uh, things in there. I don't want to go into all detail about the curriculum because that would spend too much time. Then I would spend too much time here. And Hugo, you have to interrupt me if I exceed the five minutes. Uh, but just one thing, um, which I especially like you starting out with your personal mission statement. So at the very, very start, you're working on your very personal mission statement. It's not just writing it down. It's building a, a community of followers that can be done through any challenge cha channel that you choose. That could be a podcast, that could be a blog, that could be a YouTube channel. You essentially talk about what you love and what you love doing and why you think it's necessary to build things from the very first day of your, your studies. And that eventually then ends up in either creating your startup or creating your innovation project. And all of it is um, done by great educators, but mentors. We have Verena Pausta or people working at, at Apple that will support you and guide you and mentor you. Um, and it's building upon each other, starting with knowledge and, and skills, then actually to creating solutions. Um, and it's uh, a neatly designed master's program, but just the very first thing and all of the other uh, offerings and with that I end um, are based on this equa equation. So we think that education needs to really fulfill exactly this equation. It's about purpose on the one hand, I need to understand why I'm studying, why I'm learning, why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's also about the right capability, which is the right knowledge, but also 21st century skills. And you need the right community of co-learners. Social learning is really important. And then you can have a maximum of impact in your life. And that's what we strive to do with every education program at tomorrow's. And uh, if you have questions, comments, critique, uh, please let me know. Other than that, our founding club, so the first cohort of students was just announced. Announced You can uh, actually apply until I think it's end of the week or this week. Every first student gets a share in the company as well. So uh, we want the shapers and the pioneers of tomorrow that believe in this mission with us. Uh, and uh, if not yourself, then feel free to spread the word. That will be great. But also not just that, give feedback wherever you can because that's how we learn as a community as well. Thank you very much, Igo. I hope I didn't um, extend or take too much of the time. It's okay. I give you I give you a few uh, a few extra minutes, but uh, no, it was a, a great pitch. Thank you, Thomas. It's actually the first time I, I go so deep into the the curriculum and I see what's uh, behind the curtain a little. So very nice stuff. We got two questions already. So the one the first one from Jens asking if you have traditional lecturer or if everything is app based and on your phone. So yes, we have uh, no traditional lecture. Um, everything is self-directed. You can learn from anywhere, everywhere in the world. So it's really the, we call it the university in your pocket. Um, um, and it's, uh, it's not just active learning, clicking through. And with that really living in a social distance and not connecting to anybody, we have the challenges. That's a core thing embedded where you work with others on your stuff. Um, so it's not traditional lectures, not at all. We don't have exams as well. So there are no exams. Um, it's all, all, all about application uh, and uh, applying your, your knowledge. Cool. Next one is from Ankit, who's asking, you know, in light of technology evolving so rapidly, um, how, how is your uh, degree based on this? You know, do you have to retrain a person uh, down the road uh, if, uh, yep. if you're using technology as the basis? That's a perfect question. It's actually, um, we, we wouldn't educate for job profiles. So for example, today, one of the highest sought after job profiles is the data scientist or anybody that is, that is able to engineer software, to build software. So it's not that, that job profile that comes out of our studies is actually based on the core, the, the core skills of the 21st century. Um, and the, that are people that are able to think critically, that are uh, use data to make decisions, that are problem solvers. Um, and that does not qualify to being a data scientist. Perhaps, I mean, the assumption is valid that in 10 years, we still need many data scientists, but perhaps we don't. Technology is changing, perhaps we don't. 
And for that, we need to, to, um, to, to have a different system of education where it's not about knowledge and, and fixed job profiles. It's about making change happening adapt, and adapting to the environment. Great. Well, thank you, Thomas. That's, uh, that's pretty much all the time we have. But uh, if, if you want to talk to Thomas uh, and you're interested to know more, like he said, the application date's coming up for uh, coming to an end. So make sure you check out tomorrow's website. And I'll also be sharing the form so you can, uh, you can send Thomas a, a contact request through that. Thanks again, Thomas, for presenting this morning. Thank you very much, Igo. Thanks all and uh, see you soon. All right, our next presenter is Ines Mulder Teichmann from DChamps. Uh, DChamps is a startup that is based at TechFort here, and they were actually featured in our yearbook last year because we, we love their mission so much. Um, Ines, do you hear me? And are you able to share your slides? Yes, I hear you, and I'll try to. <laughs> Is it working? Yep. Okay, so thank you, Hugo, for the introduction and thanks for having me today morning. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining. I'm really excited to have the opportunity to introduce DCHAMS in such a format as I only have five minutes. A quick introduction of myself. I'm Ines muller Timon and the co-founder and managing director of DCHAMS. I'm since 20 years in the IT industry and the digital transformation of organizations was the main focus of my professional career. With DCHAMS, we are based in Frankfurt and part of the great tech quarter community. We are founded in June 2020 and started our first trainings in September 2020. So, Do you see the next slide? Sorry for asking. No, at the moment, it's still the introduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope I haven't got any network problems. Well, we, we can moment. hear you fine. It might be just the... Uh, ah, no. uh, I have to do it by hand, so sorry. Um, yeah, we believe that digital competencies are one of the most important skills now and in the future as we see a big gap between the demand of highly digitally qualified people and the current status of digital education. We decided to address exactly this gap in a nutshell DCHAMS focus on digital skills. We train, educate and sell digital skills because digitization and the development of digital skills are one of the most important issues of our time, as well as a social task. With the beginning of Corona, it has shown us that Generation Y and Z are not as digital as we thought. They know how to use their mobiles, but digital hardware and software basics, which were important, for example, for homeschooling, were a challenge. And that connected with our minority of experts in all economic areas in Germany was the start of our startup. We at DCHAMS have set ourselves the task of counteracting this issue and turning children, teens, young adults and adults into digital champions from digital basics like hardware, software skills and internet research and also coding for everybody. So who we are, we are a diverse team of four with different expertises uh, out of investment banking, marketing, law, science, and IT. Diana and me, we are the co-founder team. We handle the daily business. Christoph and Achim are silent partners. By the way, I'm looking for a new partner because Diana has to leave due to private reasons. Um, um, our Products are trainings. In a three pillar method, we offer knowledge, behavior, and the implementation of that, the experience with a lot of fun and professional trainers. Our three training courses based on each other. Our trainings are on site trainings at Tech Quartier or at social partners like the Archie or Young Carit Caritas. Even if e learning um, is an appropriate way to educate people. We strongly believe that on-site trainings are more effective specifically for kids. That's the reason why we are focused on on-site trainings. In this way, we prepare our participants for the requirements of the digital age, develop interesting talents for companies and open up new perspectives to help shape the digital future. Mm. 
we work on a five pillar market model. Um, the first pillar is for children and teens out of private households to make them digitally fit. The second pillar is by sponsoring like um, so a corporate social responsibility from companies for children from socially disadvantaged households. The third pillar is supporting schools, for example, on project days or weeks complementary to lessons. The fourth pillar are for adults or young adults in training who are digitally prepared for the professional world during their training. We are also looking for additional partnerships similar to the ones we already have, like social facilities, partnerships with Arche and companies which helps to support social facilities. And we are also looking for new topics like software tools to make learning easier and or different in the 20, uh, 21st century, sorry, and bring DCHAMS to the next level. As you can see, the market for education technology is on a dramatic growth path and its usage becomes more and more important. We will see different ways of learning in the future. The education sector is on the cusp of a digital revolution in the age of digitization, automation and artificial intelligence. The conventional teaching methods of educating the students is not the only available option. The implementation of technology in education is enabling schools and institutions to offer innovative solutions such as ebooks, immersive content via augmented reality, virtual reality, and hybrid models with on site and online courses. Um, as we are big believers in hybrid models, we will also see a huge growth in, in innovative um, on-site trainings in a new way and style and focused on the latest technolo technologies and methodologies. Um, this chart re emphasizes the importance of digital skills in the future. It's from Bitkom, the German largest digital association, and testifies that Two thirds of their members say that digital competencies are just as important as professional and social competencies by 2025. And with that, I come to the end of my presentation and I hope I could give you a glimpse of what we do at DCHAMS. Thanks for listening. And now I'm open to receive questions. Great, thank you, Ines. Uh, we already have a question here in the chat uh, asking about the USP. Uh, so, uh, Christian mentions uh, Haba Digital Werkstatt and uh, Redi School. I don't know if you know them, but uh, essentially, what, how do you, how does your model compare to those? Yes, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, our USP is um, we we know Haba Digital Werkstatt. We have on-site trainings um, at the Tech Quartier. Um, and we are working with the with the three pillar method like know how behavior experience, and um, I think and and that is our feedback right now that it is quite good to have these on site trainings in Tequity um, or at the um, Arche or Young Caritas, um, and that is yeah our our main USP right now that we are that we are doing the on-site trainings. Great. Um, Ankit is asking, how big are you now and what are your plans to scale? Um, and if the answer is yes, how will you address the question of maintaining the quality? As you just mentioned, your USP is to deliver on-site. So then, you know, if, if that's going to grow, how will you manage that? Yeah, yep. I, I just mentioned that we are really looking for uh, other partners. Um, our yeah, next steps would be um, a portfolio extension, absolutely. So uh, also um, a geographically um, expansion in Germany. And uh, we, we really know that we can't do it um, without online trainings or, or other software tools. So um, we are really looking for other partners, but um, we are also, um, absolutely interested on the uh, geographical um, um, expansion on that. Maybe to touch on the co-founder or co partner that you're looking for, do you have any specific profiles or details about uh, the it, type it, of it candidate? Would be, it would be great uh, if uh, entrepreneurship is one of uh, of the main or is our main focus, but also attitude, think out of the box, uh, creativity, 
um, open for new things, um, also technology and um, also fun. I think that is uh, and, and a good humor because I think uh, if you work very closely together, you, you need um, to have a same humor and the same um, yeah, kind of uh, fun because that is absolutely important to make business together. Maybe also good with children. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You have a good, uh, yeah, you, you need to have, yeah, you need to have a good <laughs> kind of humor, right? Okay, great. Well, thank you for your pr uh, presentation, Ines. And um, yeah, if you want to get in touch, the details are on the slide. I also shared the form in the chat, so you can use this. Thank you. Thanks. All right, moving on to our next presenter. Uh, that would be Jens. Uh, it's kind of tricky. I go back to my slide and then you share yours. But uh, Jens Wisniewski, who is the co-founder of Concludio, they recently joined the community. So uh, Jens, you can actually go right ahead and share your slides. All right. Um, so let me share my screen. All right, so I am Jens. Uh, I'm co-founder of Concludio, Mathe Richtig. And uh, we founded this company from a similar point of view that our other speakers founded a company. We saw that we lack some educational capacities and some core competencies for us. It wasn't... Uh, digital or sustainability, for us it was math really. And we saw um, very similar to the other speakers that there was uh, a huge gap in what was possible with technology and what we actually use in math education. And uh, it's just such a core competency that you need for all other kinds of science. We already had requests from chemists, physics. We talked about data science earlier. Everything kind of is based on math. And we have a big problem that there's a huge dropout rate in math uh, or math-based um, courses specifically. And we have a hu huge dropout rate. It's kind of overwhelming for people and there's not enough resources to provide the proper mentoring that people need. And, sorry. Uh, and to, fully realize all our potentials. So um, the reasons we found were there's very little feedback from homework correction. The homework correction, if you get homework to do to practice, you do it on paper, you hand it in, you wait like a week, and then eventually you get some feedback. And by then you kind of forgot what the exercise was about. Um, the e-learning solutions that we have right now are not that great. It's mostly just like recorded lectures or maybe, maybe a multiple choice quiz or uh, something where you have to put like a final solution to a problem and then you're not really sure where you did your mistake. And the tutoring is expensive and of varying quality. So our solution is basically use innovative technology to make everything better. And um, we created an interactive online editor for math that gives you immediate feedback on what you're doing and what is correct and what you're doing wrong. So we have the advantages of immediate feedback um, because we kept the format as close as possible to the traditional paper, but in a, in a digital way, we have direct applicability in exams we have all the statistic evaluation that you could wish for, and that gives a better overview on the progress of the lecture. And because the, menial, uh, the, the manual task of correcting every, ex every exercise can now be basically uh, be done digitally, uh, the, the tutors and mentors that you usually just use for doing hours and hours of exercise correction now can just go to the students directly and help them and mentor them directly and um, respond to questions. So how did we do all this? We have this nice user interface here um, that gives you the online 
we call it proof editor, um, where you have like an exercise and then you can step by step put all the required um, math reshapings and all the reasoning. And then in the back end, there is a knowledge base AI that will verify if all of your um, math checks out, if all your, um, your reasoning is solid, uh, is, your reasoning is sound, and it will correct you. Um, for example, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, like this little red rounding triangle means you did like a, a mistake in the step. And then it gives you some um, feedback on maybe how you can improve this so that your solution works. Uh, we also have just added the handwriting recognition so that you can now not only enter math by typing LaTeX, but also by um, just writing with your finger on the phone or with like one of these nice pens. And we have uh, an inbuilt formula collection that gives you all the most important formulas and rules for the exercise. All of this is configurable by the teacher, of course. Uh, you can also just give an exercise without any hints or extra rules displayed. Uh, our competition is basically all the old world uh, that relies on videos, on puzzles, on exercise sheets and examples. Uh, everything is basically just more or less, here is an exercise, do it yourself and hopefully understand what you've done right and wrong. And we are really the only ones who have this complete um, solution path editor that tells you exactly where you did something right and where you did something, something wrong. Uh, then there's obviously also open source systems like different content management systems, basically. None of them really have all the features of correcting math exercises and we can integrate with them to um, make it easier for universities to already, who already have one of those to integrate Concludio as well. Uh, for a business model, for those who are interested, uh, we have like this shared business model of B2B going directly to universities and B2C uh, offering our courses for, your, uh, for students as subscription who need a little bit of extra math help. And, uh, well, the market, everyone knows that math is the basis for all the science and there's a lot of students who really need this. So I'll try to keep it uh, yeah. <laughs> quick, but I'll very quickly go into how the interface looks like. So this is the interface. Uh, you have an exercise up here and then you can basically uh, start your stuff here. I'm just gonna load the example solution. And basically it checks everything here. And even if you do like a little mistake, like um, let's say you forgot to declare a variable, we can check that or if you have like some little error where it's like, um, you did the math wrong, it tells you, or if you didn't use the rules correctly, it also tells you. So that's really, as far as we are aware of the most advanced math online learning solution that currently exists. And we're trying to get it out there to universities, to students, uh, to just help improve math, math education. Great. Thank you, Jens. I think I told you uh, during your, your onboarding that I, I would have hoped that this uh, type of solution existed back in my days because uh, I could have used it. Um, so we got a few questions here. Let's try to run through them. Uh, what's your USP? So basically, how do you compare to Sofa Tutor, Binogi, Snappet, do you have an adaptive learning included some AI features? Yes, uh, the real USP is really this uh, knowledge base AI in the background that understands what you're doing with your math. It goes further than just like the traditional attempts at just using computer algebra systems to check a couple of the steps. 
because those can only uh, check really the mathematics, not the logical path, parts and uh, not the conclusions like a computer algebra system could never tell you like uh, stuff like definition then wegen der definition der injectivität uh, follows f is injective that's the kind of stuff that traditional learning systems couldn't do and also um, most of the people uh, most of the competitors named like sofa tutors still use just like videos in multiple choice and we're just like a couple of steps ahead of that in terms of making sure everyone does the math correctly. Cool. Uh, another question from Christian was, uh, is there any gamification features? Um, not yet. We have tried to keep the user interface very neutral because we wanted to market to universities as well. Um, and we were not sure if this kind of heavy gamification was um, uh, yeah, was something that universities would really like. Uh, it is pretty easy to implement. We already have like this whole um, system that um, checks how many exercises you have correct and that just manages the exercises. It would be pretty simple to put some experience points or leveling system on top of that and make it a bit more gamified. But so Maybe far we have not. Compared to your classmates as well, I don't know, like you can so make some socialization features perhaps. Or sure, something. sure. I think there's so much you can do, but uh, the first thing you have to have is how to logically solve the equations. <laughs> like the, you need to have those things right. And then, okay. Uh, final question from Ankit. He was asking about the uh, individual pace of learning. So is this based on different profiles or, you know, levels of advancement in terms of math know-how or is it just one size fit all? Um, so the system can do everything. Basically, we can go from basically solve for X. This, uh, we, can, we, can we have simple exercises with like solve for X and we have more complicated stuff like pro proof a statement by complete induction, which like is the most well most difficult logical uh thing that we have in the demo right now but um the underlying math system is very flexible and it could just adjust to any kind of exercises um so we can have different courses we can have like an eighth grade uh course we can have something for abi or high school uh, final exams, we can have something for first, second year of university. Uh, the system is very flexible in terms of the math, and it's more about building the right exercises for your students. If you are a teacher or um, offering them in a nice package for us. Great. All right. Thank you, Jens. That's all the time we have, but thanks for your presentation. Yeah, thank all right. you. Let's uh, move on. So next up, we have the company Teach. Uh, we actually have, I believe, the CTO, uh, Robert Zibiga, who is on the line. On the line. Uh, hi, Robert. Can you hear me and are you able to share your slides? Yes, I can hear you. So now you should uh, see my screen. Yep, we got it. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Hugo, for the introduction. Um, and thank you for having me. My name is Robert, I'm the CTO of Teach, and I would like to talk a little bit about Teach and the product we're building. Um, basically, it started with one of our founders. He always wanted to build um, something for the educational sector here in Germany because our school system is um, uh, a little bit outdated. We're not really that technologically advanced in the schools. And after last year, everything kind of changed here and around the world. Um, he came up with the idea to build um, a virtual classroom. And this is basically all we're about at the moment is transforming the existing classroom we have where we go in person and rebuilding this in an online environment that we can, you know, matter if there is a pandemic going on or not, educate um, our our children in the end. 
And uh, one of the big problems we were facing is with existing solutions. There was, they didn't really work in Germany with the strict privacy um, rules we have here and the laws. So our, one of our, the things we need to implement, it needed to be a solution that was hosted in Germany. So um, in the end, the, we didn't have the problems with existing solutions that they're transferring data out of the country, around the world, that they're using the school, uh, the students' information basically for other purposes. This is why we decided to build something that is hosted in Germany and um, confirm with the laws here. And another big aspect was it needed to be really um, simple to use because a lot of existing solutions are catered more towards businesses and uh, teachers, students, and a lot of them are pretty young students. They're not really comfortable or many of them not really used to working a lot on a computer. So we needed to build something that is easy to use and doesn't require um, a course basically to understand it or a big kind of setup because we're talking about schools in the end and they might not have the infrastructure or the funding to install their own systems, provide um, special kind of devices to every student. This is why we decided to build a web application that you can use like you see on the slide here with a phone, um, a laptop, a tablet uh, or a simple old desktop computer. So the only really requirement we have is that you have a, a recent browser installed on it. And because the schools, a lot of schools don't have a technician, we wanted the simplicity, not just in the, in the use case for the um, consumer, the student and the teacher, we also wanted a really simple process to get the, stool, uh, the schools on board. That means, um, Every teacher basically, it doesn't need an IT background, can um, sign into our platform, import the teachers, import the students, and just assign the students to classes and subjects. And that's it. It's a simple four step process. It takes a couple minutes, and um, basically, everyone is ready to go. And I would like to show a quick demo how our tool works. Let's see if this works. I hope you can see it. I hope it's not too small. Basically here on the right, you have one um, browser window. This is the teacher's view. And on the left here, you have a student view. And as you can see, both of them see pretty much the same. The only difference is the teacher can add uh, appointments here or sessions, the student can only see them. And they simply click on a session, join in. This here on the right is the teacher's view, like I said, that's shown as a student as well. Here we go. And as you can see, this is basically our virtual classroom. We have here on the left side of the teacher's view and on the left side of the student view, we have our live interaction. This is where you have the picture of the teacher that is transmitted to all the students. And you also can see the students if they're answering, for example, a question, if they lift their hand here, then you see there is a like notification here on the teacher's panel uh, that he can see. Oh, I have a question a student wants to answer. I can activate his streaming. Then everyone would see the student. He can answer a question um, or ask a question. And you also have the ability to share the, the board with the student. Like this, the student can write on the board. And this is basically the interactive part um, or the real communication part. And on the right side, you see here our whiteboard. And actually, we have multiple whiteboards. Um, to you can pre-prepare those slides here for or boards in the end for the students, or you can just build them during the session. You can draw on them, upload pictures, move stuff around. You can highlight stuff here, and you see everything you do here. If you write on it, just see like this. Um, you see it gets transmitted to the student right away. And um, another feature we just implemented recently is a chat system. You can just open this up here. And this is um, as a secondary communication channel um, that is open to all the participants in the room. And it's also a great way to give the teacher some feedback about, for example, uh, can everyone hear me? Is everything working? They can just use one of those emojis here to send a thumbs up uh, to the teacher like this. He knows everything is fine. Um, the last feature we have here is uh, attachments. Let me open this up here. And this is basically another way 
for the teacher to um, transport information to the student. For example, if he wants to give them some homeworks, he can just attach a file here. The students can then download it, prepare it, and, and later on uh, send it back to the teacher. That's it in my time frame here for the live demo. Let's um, keep going real quick. Um, this, what you show in the live demo is what we have now online and it's working as actually used by a couple hundred schools already. And what is on our roadmap at the moment is basically breakout sessions and breakout sessions um, are a way for the teacher to group some students, move them in a separate room, let them work on a task or the presentation. And then after a given amount of time, pulls them back in in the main room and let them present it to each other. And the other big feature that is requested a lot is basically a storage cloud system that gives the students and the teachers an easy way to, to organize all their notes and materials. For example, if a student needs to prepare for a test, he can simply log into our platform, select the subject, seize all the materials, all the notes, prepare for the test, and be ready to go. And I'm a little bit over time, so I make this pretty fast, just to give you an impression about where we're from price point like because we are catering towards schools and a lot of public schools there might not be a lot of funding available our smallest packages start uh, as low as a couple hundred bucks uh, per year and go up to around a thousand bucks for larger schools and because we can offer those prices because we don't require any kind of special hardware and devices it's a simple web-based app and we hope with this pricing, we can give every uh, student in Germany the possibility to use this kind of, of learning during this hard time. So that's basically all from my side. Um, I hope you enjoy it and I'm looking forward uh, to some questions. Yep, thanks, we got two already. So the first one is uh, from Jens asking, can students write on the whiteboard as well? Yes, they can do. Um, and then I couldn't show this now, but when um, basically here you can activate the board for the student and then he can write on it at the moment. This is just a demo, so it's not transmitting, but in the actual working version that is online, of course, the student can, uh, can access the whiteboard, write on it, even upload a picture and stuff and interacting, interact with it. Okay, next one is from Christian asking, what are you doing differently to its learning? HPI as DUI. Um, complicated question is um, when we started, its learning was a little bit different built than it's uh, at the moment. They have more, it's learning itself. I know their platform, there's more catering towards like the all the administration around it. And our focus really lies at the moment on this virtual classroom. That means this live interaction, the live education between the students and the teacher and not so much um, about the stuff around it. Yes, we do plan to integrate like a cloud storage to cater more towards in that direction that we can give more service around it. But the focus at the moment is really more driven towards this virtual classroom. Okay, great. Last one from Elder. I think you didn't mention it, but like in terms of your competition, uh, I think I saw a slide, but I'm not sure if you touched on it. So how, does, how is the competitive landscape? Um, I would say now it's a bit more difficult than it was um, when we started out with this because um, you need to think we started out uh, in the beginning of last year building this application and there wasn't really that much around at the time. Like I said, there's now it's more around in form of Zoom and Teams that they integrated a whiteboard and stuff like that. But even if you look at Teams, um, for the people who know Teams, it is really not that intuitive for especially young students uh, to get into it because you need to install software. You, you need to maybe need a special device for it because your phone is not uh, fast enough and our solution basically doesn't have any of those requirements you just log in the website and you go to go mm, great yeah I'm, I'm sure like uh, corona has accelerated the move to online of course like uh, every industry but uh, you had started working on it already so i think you had a, a head start possibly but thanks for your uh, sorry sorry i cut you off no 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 thank you <laughs> Thanks, Robert, for the presentation. I'm, I'm just looking at the time. So uh, we have one startup left. Let me just uh, maybe... Let me stop screen sharing. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, the last startup we have is um, Maple... I'm sorry, I forget the name. I got it. Maple Tails. 
and its founder Timo Zorlu. Timur, if you can hear me, you can go ahead, share your slides and go ahead with your pitch. Perfect. So you most probably will see the presentation in like a second. And uh, now you are right. Perfect. Yep. So um, we at Maple Tales have the perfect app to introduce children to the fun and exciting world of reading. Through reading our 15 minute long stories, the child can benefit from all the benefits of what reading is really all about. Um, do I have to click? No. Perfect. So our vision is that we want to introduce children to the fun world of reading. Because in my childhood and of my co-founder's childhood, all we did was reading because um, we only got phones at around the age of 10 to 12. And that's why the time we spend is time spent reading, for example. And we want to create products that are easy to use and help us to foster creativity in every child. And that's our mission, foster creativity in every child. So what is the current problem? The current problem is the rising usage of phones and decreasing reading time of children attending primary schools. So in Germany, the ages from six to 10. So the reasons for, reasons for rising phone usage are uh, the accessib accessibility. So everyone uh, has access to phones because it's so cheap to get a smartphone. So it's a no brainer for parents to buy the child a phone to, for example, keep in touch with a child, uh, with a child when it's going to school or going to the relatives or the reliability. So if you give a child a phone, it just keeps shut for one or two hours and you have free time to do your stuff. And um, children are using more and more content or are using you more and more phones because there are more content with games, videos, with new apps and everything. And um, currently at the uh, quarantine uh, phase right now children are also using phones as um, for homework and what the problem there is it gives them fake dopamines because they get feedback through for example games where they win something but it's only a fake dopamine it's not like in a real world that they gain something but there are also lots of lots of um, causes things that can uh, use it that the phone use it can cause for example learning disabilities sleep disorder the first addiction of the child and a higher rate of tantrums because uh, if the child has to give the phone to the parents, it's like a really high cause of tantrums that get caused in children. And um, let me try that again. So some statistics for you. Um, between 60% of children gets their phone after the age of 10 and 40%, 39.2% gets their phone between the ages from three to 10. So that's like a really high um, number of phones in that age group. And uh, when children use their phone, they, around 35.6% use their phone one to two hours a day. And around 30 to 35% are using it more than two hours. And uh, you have to get that in your mind that they're using it so much. And the main usage, like you can see is playing games, um, being on social media and other stuff, but like for real, they're not using it for any educational purposes. Um, but the gadgets are not the enemy. So the smartphones are not the enemy because smartphones, you can increase your penetration of tablets, smartphones. Um, so you have smartphones everywhere and you have a possibility of multi-sensory engagement and you can get an instant feedback, what is really good about that. So we came up with a solution that is Maple Tales. Maple Tales are 15 minute long stories where every two to five minutes, a child can choose uh, from three options. So the child can decide in what, story, uh, this, in what direction a story goes. Our primary aim are uh, primary school children uh, between the age of six to 10 in uh, many European countries like Germany and England because of German and English. And our goal is to bring back reading to children. Just uh, for you to know, Maple Tales, we came onto that name because our stories are built like decision trees and we wanted to have a tree in there. That's why we had Maple in there. And we want improvements of knowledge, reading, creativity, independence with um, that app so the children can like get their story built on their own. So our app features user-friendly content. It's multilinguistic, it's data-backed, and that's really important because if you're in the first grade, you get first grade stories. If you're in second grade, you get second grade stories. And that goes up. And if you want to, for example, learn English, even though you're in the fourth grade, when you want to learn English, you get um, English stories for like the first grade, for example. It's multi-platform on iOS, Android, 
on tablets and phones. And what is really good as well is that you can get personalized feedback about the reading. So the parent gets personalized feedback about the child's reading time, speed, how much the child read, and that's like our ideal thing. So the content is created by child book authors, by freelance writers who want to write for us. Right now we're using students who get like a two hour training before writing stories and they can choose stories between like jobs, animals, travel and adventure. So they can start write stories about that. And um, we also have in-house writers who write stories in um, our, like for us right now. And um, we also wanna implement game, movie animations, content creators who also write stories for us. Our market opportunity there is really big because in Germany, um, when you go to the kids app market and average spending of parent per child, it's around 4 billion in the DAF market and goes up to 56 billion in the total market where we have 1.3 billion children. Uh, customers are children, parents. Um, so children are using the app and parents are buying the app or getting the app for free because we're a premium model. We have authors who work for us. And at last, we wanna work with institutions in a B2B model. So like I said, we're a premium model app. Uh, we are subscription based where um, the child or the parent can buy premium features with feedback for the parents, connecting with friends, bonus stories, more char characters and uh, other stuff. Our other revenue streams are that we want to have, like I said, a premium membership that we are expect around eight euros each month. Uh, ad advertisements in the parent part of the app, so the child won't have access to that. And affiliate links for selling books for th of the authors. Like I said, we have stories of the authors and the child can use, can um, give like a signal to the parent that it likes the story of the author and the parent can even buy the um, book of the author so that's our final go to implement um, the reading from digital to uh, offline reading so we have many um, competitors like uh, speaker booth and even amazon kindle but they don't all have um, the three like the three options model that we have so the child can can't de decide how the story goes our stores are also, also multilingual and we give feedback to parents, what is like a really plus for us. I'll be finished in a minute, sorry for delaying the um, pitch a bit. So uh, we also have really lots and lots of product possibilities that we can go to. So we wanna co uh, incorporate with uh, educational institutions and work with schools and work with, um, for example, tutoring classes. What also could be a really good possibility to go to is for example, working with a travel agency where they display our stories. So the child, when it writes with an ICE from Deutsche Bahn can just read our stories and get educated on their self. Also, we can focus on language learning. Even when people are older, they can read, for example, four class stories in English. Um, so we all already accomplished two, two to three competitions. We went, went uh, we attended the second version of Tech Talents and got third place there and went to the Red Bull Basement competition where we got first place. Um, our team consists of three people currently, two co-founders. It's me, Timur. I'm currently acting as a CEO. Mohamed, my co-founder, is the CTO, and we're currently working with a friend of ours that is a Bachelor of Educational Science. So she studied in the educational feed, field, and she's doing our content. And we are currently backed by two professors and an incubator from Justus Liebig University. So we have one uh, professor from marketing and sales and one that is helping us with uh, the ped pedagogy key side of stories. So thank you very much for your attention. And I'm really looking for the questions you have. Great, thank you, Timur. First question is from Jens about why are the authors listed as customers? Um, the authors are listed as customers because, um, like I said a bit later, uh, we want to sell the books of the, cust uh, of the authors. So it's currently like that, that um, the authors write stories for us based on their books. Just as an example, let's say um, Harry Potter. So J.K. Rowling would be a really cool thing, writes stories about the characters where the child can like decide how the story goes. And if the child likes the story, it can say to the parent and the parent has an affiliate link to the book or the author. So that's why authors are customers as well because they can come to us and ask us to support or advertise or the book there to sell it over the affiliate link. Okay, great. Eldar had the one question, he was asking about the name Maple. Yeah, Maple Tales, because uh, our stories are based with the three options. So if you go three options after, if you go to one option, there are again three options. And it's like the logic tree, like we have it in statistics and math. 
and we wanted to have a tree in our name and because we like maples and um, the maple like you see on the bottom right is like a really beautiful looking leaf leaf we decided for maple Great. And then uh, he, he said he was skeptic about the B2C business model. So maybe you can address it. Like what's, what's your unfair advantage and how do you think you can win in, uh, in what's becoming a, a tightly contested market? Mm -hmm. The thing about that is um, we don't want to, uh, we want, we don't want the child to be more on the phone. So we want to convert that time that I told you, uh, for example, two hours, we want to convert 15 minutes of that time to reading our stories. And for um, parents, you can really see what the child does for that 15 minutes of time. So if, for example, if you give the child the phone and say, okay, first of all, you have to read the story and then you can do whatever you want to do. Um, the parent gets feedback about the reading time and uh, can see that the child reads every day, for example, or every two days. And for us, that's like a really good advantage that we have. So we can show the parents if the ch child reads, it has all the benefits of reading and the child, uh, the parent as well, just knows what the child is doing while it's on the phone. And that's for us the advantage because you have all the, um, all the controls over the app. Super. Thank you for your pitch, Timor. We're approaching the, well, we actually passed the one hour mark. So I want to thank you and all the speakers as well. Um, one thing though, we, we were approached by uh, one last startup. So uh, if you have like a few minutes left, I, I told them that if they can really make an elevator pitch, uh, you know, I could let them in. So they're called Tech Labs. They're based out of Berlin. Uh, I believe we have Max and Nana on the line. Um, I made you co-host, so feel free to introduce yourself and your project. Perfect. Just give me a second. I have some slides prepared. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So three minutes was it right? Um, so hey everyone, I'm Max. I'm from TechLibs Berlin. Um, what is our mission? Um, we try to make the world a better place by using tech for good. So tech can be used for a lot of uh, positive things. You can improve the climate with it, hopefully. Um, you can fight poverty with it. Uh, you can use it for a lot of medical usages. And also it's, it has a big impact on society. For example, the Via, Via versus Virus Hackathon um, yeah, made up some really good projects. Also about um, bringing um, test capacities up and improving how um, the labs tested. Um, but there's also dark side. So 48% of the European population actually doesn't know what's an algorithm. And if you don't know what's an algorithm, there's a lot of um, uses of tech, which, um, which can really fuck society over. So Cambridge Analytics is a big one using um, public data to affect um, voting systems. Um, or another big one is uh, deep fakes, where you fake, for example, Obama to say something which he never said. So we really do think this is a negative impact on society and we TechLabs uh, is here to, to improve this. Um, so yeah, our mission is to um, provide young people with a platform that enables them to acquire state-of-the-art tech skills in order to solve the problems of our time entrepreneur entre entrepreneurially and digitally. Um, yes, so basically we have three um, big pillars in us. We have a local community, um, we have an online learning, and we combine those with actual project work um, with professional mentors. Um, so what's our unique selling point? Basically you get an introduction into tech for free. And uh, I would say it's a very good introduction into tech. Um, yeah, all these three pillars pr uh, provide our digital shaper program. Um, it's for free, you get a good introduction. And why is it special compared to a lot of other competitors we have? We really try to automate more things. So we have a Slack community, which is getting more and more automated. Um, so the techies are just more engaged. Um, we have individual learning paths on our um, learning platform. Um, so to, to, so that, uh, that our participants actually learn what they need to learn in the most effective way. Um, Yes, so our local community format usually consists of three things. So we have lightning talks from um, professionals in the industry. We have workshops where people with a strong tech background um, give them a bit deeper introduction into things we don't teach in our curriculum yet. Um, we also have a lot of social communities because what we learned is that if we just let anyone give an online course, um, they won't uh, finish it. So we really want to provide the strong social opportunities so people are motivated to finish our program. 
Um, we have four tracks, data science, AI, web development, and UX. Um, and basically our semester contains of, yep, this is three minutes um, of two parts. Uh, we have the academy phase with the self-learning online course. And then once they have the knowledge, um, once they have the knowledge, they will go into the project phase um, with interdisciplinary teams where they are um, yeah, guided from a professional mentor um, through the whole program. Okay, some examples, a bit out of time. Um, yes, uh, we already educated 1,000 techies. We're not only in Berlin, but also in a lot of other locations, mainly focused in Europe, but also some in South America. Um, last slide. So we have a lot of competitors. There's Ironhack, there's Deliver God, there's all, on, all the online courses. But what's the difference? We're actually not a startup, we're an NGO. Um, so we're all volunteering and do this in our free time. Perfect. Thank you for giving us this spontaneous opportunity. If you have more questions, uh, reach out to me or look on our website. Um, yeah, and uh, if you think maybe uh, you, your startup wants to cooperate with us, feel free to reach out to me or anyone in our team um, to discuss it. Thank you. Super. Thank you, Max. Okay, we got time for one question. You got Jens asking if you're accredited in any way. No, so we don't have any accreditation in any way. Um, yeah. Like Le Wagon, basically, I think it's just really to get the skills out. And uh, it, what about the cost? I'm sorry, you, did you mention it? Um, uh, it's for, so uh, it's for free. We have some sponsors, um, but our, our participants don't pay anything because we think that uh, education should be um, as, as free as possible to reach actually a lot of people who actually need it. Okay, awesome. Very cool. Thank you for uh, being super flexible and taking the last slot that I created just for you. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks for giving us the opportunity. No problem. And uh, thank you to everyone for your attention this morning. So um, yeah, you can uh, watch the recording on our YouTube and otherwise stay tuned for the next icebreakers.